In this video, we'll use the Samsung 256GB USB stick for installing Autocera. You can use any capacity or brand USB stick that you prefer, just make sure it supports USB 3. I use the Samsung sticks for most of my projects and they are very reliable. Everything I use in this video will be linked in the show notes below. Installing Botocera this way allows you to easily take your retro gaming collection to any x86 64-bit PC and play your games. You'll boot directly from the USB stick. You can take it to the game room, kids room, friends PC, your main PC, even a Steam Deck. Literally anywhere. If you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash PC dash you'll find a companion written guide for everything discussed in this video. If you find this content helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button on the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, I appreciate your support by subscribing to the channel. Instead of watching 10 different videos, it's all been consolidated into one, and we'll do it all in less than 20 minutes. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. We'll get started by visiting Botocera.org, click the Download menu option, and locate the option for Desktop, Laptop, NUC, and Intel-based Apple computers. Click the Direct link, and the download will begin. It'll take a few minutes, so we'll switch over and download Belina Etcher. Etcher will allow us to write the Botocera image to our USB stick. Visit belina.io forward slash etcher. Click the Download Etcher button and select the download link beside Etcher for Windows installer. Once both downloads have completed, double click the installer for Etcher, click the I agree button, and follow the prompts. Now we'll launch Etcher. Click the Flash from File button, select the Botocera image we just downloaded, and click the Open button. There's no need to extract the file. Make sure your USB stick is inserted into the computer and click the Select Target button. I recommend not having any other USB drives connected. Click the USB stick and click the Select One button. Now click the Flash button. You'll then see this warning that the drive is unusually large. If you're sure everything is correct, click the Yes I'm Sure button. The flashing process will take a few minutes, so I'll go ahead and skip forward. Make sure the flash completed successfully and close out of Etcher. Next, we'll discuss how to boot in a Botocera. The Dell G5 desktop computer I'll be using for the initial setup is about 12 feet from where I'm recording. The first thing I had to do was enter the BIOS and set the UEFI Samsung flash drive at the top of the boot sequence. How you enter the BIOS and the boot menu will vary with each computer. In the written guide, link below, you'll find a reference chart for entering the BIOS and the boot menu. Immediately after powering on the PC, in my case, I had to press F12 to enter the boot menu. To boot off the USB stick on this machine, I also had to turn off Secure Boot. On other PCs, you may find an option in the BIOS to enable or disable it. Just remember when you're done playing Botocera to re-enable Secure Boot so that Windows will be able to start back up. When Botocera boots for the first time, you'll see this blue screen while it's expanding the file system on the USB stick. Shortly after that, you'll see the Botocera logo followed by a boot animation and then Botocera will be fully booted and ready for setup. In this segment, we'll now set up Botocera. For the initial setup, I'll be using this clone Xbox wired controller. As mentioned, the PC is a little ways away, so I'll be using the small USB hub connected to a USB extension cable. To enter the Botocera menu, press start on the controller. Don't be surprised if you don't hear any audio at first. We can easily correct that. We'll go into system settings, then scroll down to audio output. From here, we have a few options, but since I'm connecting over HDMI, only the bottom option makes the most sense. If you don't find one that works, try rebooting Botocera again. I did have to do this with the Steam Deck for the audio drivers to show up in the list. After selecting the audio output driver, go back and you should begin to hear audio playing. If you want to adjust the sound level from the controller, 
Go into sound settings and move the system volume slider bar. This will allow you to adjust the volume to a level that's comfortable for you. In my case, the background music may be a little bit distracting, so I'll go ahead and toggle front end music to the off position. While my controller appears to have all the buttons mapped correctly, I like to be sure. We'll move up to controller and Bluetooth settings, press A on OK, and then press and hold a button on the controller. From here, I'll go through all the motions of mapping the buttons, the D-pad, sticks, and the hotkey button, which will be the button to the left of the Xbox button. Then press A on OK, followed by B. Botocera does include some great freeware games. This is why when Botocera starts up, you already see a few systems showing up. While we're here, let's go ahead and check out a cool SNES port called Classic Kong. It's a very well done port. And when you're done playing, press select plus start at the same time to exit the game. Now I would like to show you how to properly shut down Botocera. Press start on your controller and move down to quit. From here, you can select restart or shut down. This will properly close any open files and shut down Botocera. Some of the features I'll show next will expect a network connection. If you have an ethernet cable available, you can certainly use that but I'll show you how to set up the Wi-Fi network. Press start on your controller, move down to network settings, then enable the option at the bottom, enable Wi-Fi. Next, select your Wi-Fi network or SSID from the list, mine happens to be Lucas, enter your Wi-Fi key or password. Once done, press B to go back and then A to go back in. You should now see the assigned IP address and that the status is connected. One more thing to show in this segment is how to update Botocera. From the main menu, select Updates and Downloads. The update type should be set to Stable, then press A on Start Update. If any updates are available, they'll be downloaded and installed. Now let's briefly discuss BIOS and ROMs and how to apply them to your Botocera installation. If you're new to emulation, there are two main types of files that may be needed. The first is the BIOS. BIOS is the firmware used to provide runtime services, hardware initialization, and basically tells the emulator how to interact with these components. Many emulators require BIOS files in order to emulate a particular gaming system. Similarly, ROMs are the games themselves. It's the program code from the original game that may have originated on a cartridge, CD or DVD, floppies, etc. Both BIOS and ROMs are copyrighted material, and I'm therefore unable to provide any direct links. However, if you read this section closely in the guide, you'll find some good hints on where to go to locate them using your favorite search engine. Now let's assume we've downloaded our BIOS files to a PC and want to copy them across the network to Botocera running off our USB stick. To do this, locate where you downloaded the archive, and you may need to extract the archive using 7-zip or similar tool. In this example, the archive contains BIOS, saves, and a few ROMs. To copy them to Botocera, on the left, we'll enter backslash backslash Botocera and press enter. We'll then see a single shared folder, simply called share. Within the share folder, we'll find subfolders for BIOS and ROMs, and we'll copy both of these types of files to their respective folders. Alternatively, you can also use backslash backslash in the IP address to get to the same location. You shouldn't be prompted to enter a login, but if you are, the default user is root and the password is Linux. To copy the BIOS files from my PC across the network to the Botocera share, I'll simply select and drag them and select copy here. There are a lot of files to copy, so I'll speed past it. If prompted to replace the files, just select Replace. Now you may wonder how to check if the BIOS files are missing. Within Botocera, you can easily check if you're missing any BIOS files. Press the Start button, select Game Settings, scroll down until you see Missing BIOS Check. From there, the list will show any BIOS files that are missing. That is, if you have any games that won't start, you may want to make sure the BIOS files were copied. If you enter the ROMs folder within Botocera, you'll find a large list of folders for the various systems that Botocera supports. In each folder, 
you'll find a single .txt file or text file. If you open the file, it will identify what file extensions are supported by the emulator. In the case of the Atari 2600, it supports .a26, .bin, .zip, or .7z or 7-zip extensions. Now I'll copy a few Atari 2600 games from my PC over to Bodicera. Simply select the files and copy them to the Atari 2600 folder. You would then repeat this for any additional games you want to copy to any of the various emulators. Do note the games won't immediately show up in the list in Bodocera. We'll have to update the game list first. We'll cover that in a few moments. You can also copy files directly from another USB, SSD, or hard disk drive. Here we have a 4TB drive that is loaded with games. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I will be reviewing it on the channel very soon, so stay tuned for it. Autocera has a built-in file manager that allows you to quickly and easily transfer files from a connected drive. This method is much faster than a network copy and great for large files. Connect the drive and press F1 on the keyboard to enter the file manager. There's more information available in the written guide, so check it out if this is an option for you. To exit the file manager, select File and close Window to return back to Bodocera. The games you copy won't immediately show up in the list. To update the game list, press Start on the controller, move down to Game Settings, and select Update Game List. Then select Yes. We really want to update the game list. Bodocera will then scan the games you've copied, and they'll be available to play. Here I've added several for Xbox, NES, N64, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Dreamcast, as well as PS2 and PS3 games. If we select GameCube, notice we don't have any artwork for the games. We can easily fix this by using what's called the scraper. Press the Start button and move down to the Scraper option. Here we can scrape from a number of sources. I'll select the game's DB. There are other options to explore, such as Scraper Settings and the systems you'd like to scrape, but we'll keep it simple and just select Scrape Now. Bodicera will then go out to the internet and locate artwork and metadata for the games in the list. Once it's completed, we'll go back in and update the game list as we've already discussed and you should now see artwork for your games. If we select the main emulator, notice we have artwork, but we can't see many games on a single screen. One thing I like to do is press the Select button, then move down to Game List View Style, and change it to Detailed. This allows you to see the list of games a bit easier, and still be able to view the artwork and metadata for the selected game. Here is a quick tip to help you quickly navigate to games starting with a particular letter. Press the select button, then jump to game beginning with the letter, then select the letter such as G for Galaga. Bodicera will then jump to the first game with the letter that you've entered, and you can navigate the list by pressing up or down on the D-pad or joystick. You can also page through the list using the shoulder buttons on the controller. Now let's launch the classic arcade game Galaga. Press select to insert a credit and start to start the game. The first thing you'll likely notice is the aspect ratio isn't correct. That is, the screen appears stretched horizontally. We can easily correct that by pressing select and start to exit the game. Then from the game list, press and hold the A button for a few seconds until you see the menu appear on the right. Select advanced game options then Game Aspect Ratio. At the bottom of the list, select Core Provided. Now when we launch the game, we'll find the aspect ratio is correct and we can enjoy playing the game. Downloading new themes is a great way to improve the look and feel of Bodocera. By default, a single theme is pre-installed, but let's add a few more. You will, of course, need to have set up your Wi-Fi connection as we discussed earlier. Then press Start, select Updates and Downloads, and then select Themes. You can browse the list of available themes and press A on one of interest and select Install. Any themes you select to install will be done so in the background so you can continue to install additional themes while they're being downloaded. 
I'll download a few, then we'll take a look at some of them. To apply a new theme, press Start, move down to User Interface Settings, select Theme Set, and select one of the newly installed themes. When you back out, by pressing B, the new theme will be applied. Let's take a look at a few of them. Let's briefly discuss the PC BIOS and Secure Boot option. Now that you have successfully set up Botocera on the USB stick, you have a portable way of playing all your favorite retro games on most any PC. Of course, the performance for higher end systems will be dependent on the PC you are using. I'd like to spend just a few minutes discussing my experiences using this USB stick on a few computers I've tested. Most motherboards will include a feature called Secure Boot. When Windows is installed to a PC at the factory, the Secure Boot feature will be required to boot into Windows. However, to boot into Botocera, this option will need to be disabled in the PC's BIOS. Just remember to re-enable Secure Boot when you're done playing Botocera from your USB stick if the same PC is being used to run Windows. How to enable or disable this option is going to vary based on the motherboard manufacturer. The chart in the written guide should be helpful with that, but do check with your computer's manufacturer for the exact instructions. I only have a few computers for testing, all were able to run Botocera from the USB stick just fine. Using a USB Type-A to Type-C adapter with the USB stick on the Steam Deck also worked. While I personally prefer running Botocera on the Steam Deck using a microSD card, others may prefer this option. Just plug it into the USB-C port on the deck, press and hold the volume down, and power on the deck. From the boot manager, select EFI USB flash drive, and Botocera will boot up. The audio drivers weren't initially available until after a reboot. Just a little tip that might be helpful to you. If you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash guides, you'll find the common tasks. If you want to clone the USB stick you just created for use on multiple computers in your home, you may want to clone it. That is, you can make an exact copy so that you won't have to go through the setup process for each stick. Now I promised I would keep this video under 20 minutes. Do note that this video is just the beginning of more content planned for using Botocera on a PC or a Steam Deck. We'll soon expand the guide with how to set up light guns. I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.